Hello, I'm Guy, and this is Guy Robot. Hello, so today I'm going to try something new. I'm going to try talking about a research paper or a conference paper, some kind of scientific document related to the research I'm doing. And I'm going to try and summarize it and give my feedback of it in a couple of minutes. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because it's something I've been forced to do for university. Not the video, but the concept of actually reading papers. So as part of my assessment for the initial year of my CDT before I get into the full-on research for the doctorate, as part of a research preparation module, I have to read a different paper every week, write a summary of it, and I have to do a couple of presentations on it. So what better way to actually check if I know the subject than trying to do a video for YouTube? Yup, considering my knowledge of the subject area is about that big, thinking I'm good enough to review scientific papers is probably a bit big-headed, and I don't necessarily think I'm fully qualified, but I'm going to give it a go. So, <clears throat> here it is, my scientific paper review for robotics stuff. This week I looked at a paper with the catchy title of Increasing Modularity of UAV Control Systems Using Computer Game Behaviour Trees by Mr. P. Ogden. Now, in essence, this looks at how behavior trees work in artificial intelligence-based games and how to apply them to UAV. But let me roll that all back to the start and explain what any of that means. So, behavior trees are a way to express and manage complex states in software applications. They've existed in various guises for a long time, but in the artificial intelligence concepts, they kind of came to the foreground in games like Halo for the non-playing characters, NPC, defining the rules they played with. If you forget what behavior trees are for now, think about how a complex event may unfold in a computer game. Let's suppose you've got a boss. Now, the boss has a bunch of rules. If a person comes near me, starts attacking, that's quite simple. What about if my health gets below 10%, then I might activate in rage mode where my damage is doubled. Well, I might normally have something that if I end up being hit for more than 1% of my health, I engage a shield. But if I'm enraged, then actually it might have a different impact and I might actually double my damage up in a final blow to kill my enemy before I die. But what happens? With all that combination of states, if suddenly I remove the enrage concept, do I have to go and track back what's happening with that 1%? I'm, I'm already lost. And that's the problem. I've just given like three or four states, and tracking them all is so difficult as programs get more and more complex. If this, then that. What happens with state is each state has to know every other state. So you end up with a big O, N squared notation something like that, which basically defines it's a really complex problem and the number of possible paths through it are huge, squared, in relation to the actual problem to make. And coding all that and the transition between it is difficult. But managing changes to that becomes even more difficult. And that's where behaviour trees come in. So behaviour trees, I might try and find a picture of it, so this makes somewhat more sense than just my talking head, as wondrous as that may be, is... If you've got any idea what a binary tree is, kind of like that-ish. Um, if not, you have a series of parents, children, nodes. Think of a little circle. Now, between each of the nodes are some lines. The node at the very top, kind of forming a pyramid, gradually layering out more and more. And at the top is the root. The nodes at the very bottom are called the leaves. And in between that, they're just nodes. And each of the nodes, if they are not at the top, then the one above it is its parent, and if it's not a leaf, the nodes below it are its children. Now, each of these nodes can have different types of functionality. I'll give the six types of functionality when it comes to behavior trees. And fundamentally, they are do something, check something, change the result of something else that's been done or impose some criteria on it, such as the time limit, do a bunch of stuff in sequence, or do a bunch of stuff at the same time probably missed one there. Either way, there's a number of different things, and theoretically, you can then visually map through this tree all the different paths. So now you have 
in effect a prioritized sequence going back to the example with the boss fight am i enraged yes am i below one percent health yes have i just been hit for this amount yes do this otherwise do this a bit like a flowchart but a lot more complicated depending on how you structure everything now the great thing about this is if i remove enrage cut that off i have this whole tree of nodes here and it's visual the fact that they're now separated not connected to anything and that might be good i would just delete them all or i might want to just reconnect them to somewhere else and i can move it easily without trying to think in terms of a state machine in terms of uh, is this true and is that true and is that true now that's really easy for them, modifying stuff great so Bringing this back to what the paper says, where does this come into robotics? Well, the paper basically says you can use complex um, behavior trees rather than the existing ways of writing algorithms to control UAVs, unmanned aerial vehicles. I think I heard uninhabited airborne vehicle, one, one description. Either way, UAVs, basically drones or things that don't have humans in them flying around doing stuff. And the paper cites an example of a full drone with a combat system a go home and fuels empty system full autonomy great and it goes this would be great because it'll be more modular and it will be easier to read the code for and people will understand what it's doing better therefore use behavior trees now that's all true and that's great you've just simplified the kind of process of developing uavs and the concept behind it is at the moment all the process all the focus rather has been on how to make them better in terms of do they fly? Do they attack things? What's the imaging like? Rather than what's the architecture of the software? Because I suppose it's research rather than commercialized software like computer games. And this paper basically says, take a leap out of this, out of the computer game world, and apply it to UAVs. That's all well and good, but I don't know if that's worthy of a scientific paper. I mean, suppose I was to now go, well, hang on. Could I apply behavior tree to a heating and ventilation system in a skyscraper i mean that's quite complicated you know 200 floors i don't know if you've actually got to the floor buildings but many floors all with different rooms different zones and doing something on this floor impacts temperature on this floor and i need to control all of these and stuff's happening at different times and how does all that interact together well the state machine tracking all that's impossible so actually maybe a behavior tree says well why don't I write a paper about behavior trees and their relation to HVAC systems? And that's the thing. It doesn't actually enhance it. It's just saying use something that's already been done in a different way. There's nothing in the paper whatsoever about why it's so much better or what does it differently in the UAV space that's unique to that field. Or at least nothing I could see. Now, what would be really interesting, robotics has a real problem. Not everything's testable. Now, you consider all those different possible inputs. Uh, the camera, the way it's facing, the way just every single, you know, millions and millions of bits of data at any point in time that are coming in, all the different combinations rather of data. You can't test them all, not to get a safe critical system. However, could behavior trees help to reduce that problem domain so that you could go, hmm, well, actually, I can test the finite part here with all the various inputs and the finite part here and actually get better test coverage and consequently better safety from your robotics. Now, that's something the paper didn't explore, and it might be something that actual behavior trees are great for in the problem domain of UAVs and robotics. However, it felt to me that this paper just went, here's behavior trees, here's robotics. Guys, why are you not doing this? And you know what? There's many bits as a commercial enterprise software developer that I've been for a lot of years that I could look at from a research perspective, go, guys, why are you not doing this? I've, I've done this with research scientists before where I've been working closely with them on software products. And it's because they're not commercial software developers. They're research scientists. They solve the problems and then a software developer actually implements it ready for commercial use. So I don't think it's worthy of paper. However, that's just my opinion of where I am now. How that, All that being said, I really enjoyed the paper. Um, I thought it was a really nice description of behavior trees. It was a nice use case sample where it was. And I actually put this in context. This was at a conference. It's a good way to go to robot researchers. Hey, guys, do this stuff properly. So there we are. That is the roundup of my first paper that I'm going to stick a bit of feedback on on YouTube. 
So that was increasing modularity of UAT control systems using computer game behavior trees by P. Ogren. In case you wonder why I'm looking up there, I might have it written up there because I can't actually remember the ridiculous length of this title. In future weeks, I'll have many more exciting ones coming up, including a lot around, hopefully, computer vision and emotional recognition. As a bit of a head start, I am considering my research proposal being around just that understanding an emotional context of a human through a bunch of sensors. So I need to do a lot of research in that area. Hopefully this was interesting to you. If you thought that I was talking rubbish and this makes no sense and why am I sticking this on my YouTube channel, then tell me in the comments below or click dislike. If, however, you thought this was somewhat interesting and I should ramble much more about robotics and things, which, hey, I am Guy Robot after all, then thumbs up, like it, and also let me know what you think. Anyway, that's me for now. Please leave some comments and subscribe to my channel if you like this or check me out on social media. That's Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at Guy Robot TV. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Please check out some of my other videos. Don't forget to subscribe.